Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at GLMR. I do want to say that I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research before investing money into crypto. Now, if you haven't seen the previous update, make sure to watch that before watching this one. It's going to be linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. Now, let's jump straight into the TA. Taking a look at the four hourly chart here, if I zoom out, you can see that we do have the resistance block above us. Uh, we'll switch over to the daily in a bit, but this is basically what the resistance block looks like. Uh, so 51 and a half cents down to 43 or 42 and a half cents uh, is our resistance block. And we ran into that resistance block into the lower part of the block and we got rejected at the beginning of December and now we're coming back down. So I did talk about this a couple of weeks ago and we did trade this because um, like I said, I mentioned all of these resistance levels and the resistance block and soon after we started pumping, we had this uh, uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern playing out. So it was it was all good. Targets were met and now we're pulling back down and we are in a broadening descending wedge and uh, I do think we are going to be seeing more moves to the downside, especially with the XRP lawsuit. If, um, you know, if you don't know what's going on and you've been living under a rock, then um, the SEC has been fighting uh, Ripple for, I think, two years now, or maybe a bit more than that. I think, no, I think, yeah, two years. They started in December 2020, I think. And uh, one way or the other, SEC is not going to lose obviously, because, well, how can SEC lose? So I don't think it's going to be, if, if Ripple loses, I don't think it's going to be a massive L, right? The markets are probably going to dip, but I don't think it's going to kill the crypto industry. I think that's just going to open up a door for SEC to target other cryptocurrencies and uh, call them securities, which by definition, they are securities. But still, this is the SEC trying to get a grip uh, on the cryptocurrency market. Uh, but uh, obviously, they can only do so much in the U.S. They can't control all the uh, all the all the laws and regulations outside of the U.S. But I do think that is going to have quite an effect on the crypto markets, and I don't think we're going to get any pumps from that. Now, the nearest support block that I would highlight here is this over here. So this is where I would expect the price to come back down to anywhere from 36 cents all the way down to 33 and a half cents. Uh, this is where I think we might come back to and uh, just potentially have a bit of a sideways channel here for, for a couple of weeks, maybe. And then we have the move to the upside. However, Bitcoin is going to decide everything at the end of the day. But I would say this is a good buying opportunity. So anywhere between uh, 36 and a half all the way down to 30 three and a half cents. That's a good area to be dollar cost averaging and GLMR is on its way there. As you can see, we got a bit overextended here on the four hourly. We got a quite the gap in between the 20 EMA, which is the yellow line and the 55 EMA, which is the red line. Usually that's not a very good sign. That's a sign of a that you get before a reversal and in fact we got a reversal here and uh, you could have traded this very nicely. Like if you entered off of this support uh, that was a 42% pump. So you broke above the channel, you back tested the channel's resistance as support, which was a perfect entry. And uh, we talked about this, obviously. And uh, from there, you saw this massive pump and you could have been taking profits at these levels inside the resistance block because uh, it's very typical. You lose the the support here and you come back up to retest it as resistance and then you come back down. Basic stuff, basic stuff. So uh, if you are staking GLMR and you want to play it safe, that's cool. You know, it's it's much safer to just hold your token, stake them and not worry about these swing trades. Uh, if, you, if you don't feel comfortable doing that and if you don't um, have enough experience, then never force a trade. You're better off just sitting. Trust me. But that's obviously not a financial advice. And on the four hourly uh, RSI, ignore the trend lines here. As you can see, we are on our way back down to the oversold. So I think on the four hourly, once you go as low as you were back here in November, twice actually, that's going to be a very good buying opportunity. And I think that might co-align with, uh, with the price action coming back into this support block. Now let's switch over to the daily real quick. And let's zoom out to see um, 
uh, the Fibonacci retracement that I have set up for this chart. So we obviously have our swing high all the way back in April and we have our swing low in February. Uh, the 1.618 target was met, which is usually our technical target after you start losing the first Fib level, which was over here. Right. And then you lost it in, in, in May and then you capitulated down. Then you went to the second Fib level and now we've retraced as low as the 2.414 Fibonacci retracement. And we had a solid bounce from there, uh, which was this bottom here that we printed at the end of November. And we had a very strong move to the upside. So uh, right now, uh, I would be dollar cost averaging into GLMR whenever the price is below 40 cents. I think this is um, this is fairly uh, cheap, but also I think there's going to be a token unlock on December 15th. So be on the lookout for that. We may see further drops because GLMR is constantly getting more tokens dumped into the supply, into the circulation. So that's why I'm very hesitant to buy into the project as of right now, because there are other more lucrative altcoins, in my opinion. And uh, the major Fibonacci support level that we're going to be targeting here, which is this low that we created, is going to be at 2.414, the Fibonacci 2.414 level at 32 uh, cents, almost 33 cents, actually. So that's something to keep an eye on. And regarding the daily RSI, the blue trend line, I do apologize about that. Uh, Let's get the screen back on track. There we go. And uh, the blue trend line here is something that we are targeting as well for entries. Now, keep in mind, you could obviously see a bounce from the yellow trend line. But if we continue down to the oversold on the daily, just know that that's a perfect buying opportunity, just like this was, just like this was, just like this was, just like this was. And you can, and you can see each time you buy uh, near the oversold, you have a you know, a relief rally where you can take some profits and, and make some money. So I think uh, regardless whether you're buying long term, short term, uh, you're going to be making money if you buy down in this area. So hopefully it goes down there and you have an opportunity to dollar cost average into GLMR. But I would say that a bounce from the yellow and the blue trend lines are uh, very, very possible. So if you see the RSI reach those levels, it would be smart to just buy a bit at the, at the yellow trend line and buy a bit at the blue trend line. So uh, keep that in mind. And now let's switch over to the Binance website. And before we continue, I quickly want to ask you, do you value your privacy? If the answer is yes, then you must take a look at ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN offers you the privacy that you deserve, no activity logs and no connection logs. Your internet provider won't be able to access anything and anyone using the same open free Wi-Fi in the cafe as you won't be able to do any harm or breach your security. You can use the ExpressVPN application on any device. You can connect it to your PlayStation, or you can even connect it to your router so that anyone who connects is automatically secured. Or if you're looking to access any region blocked content on your streaming platform, well, ExpressVPN can do that as well. If you're living in the Netherlands and you want to access a TV show that's only available in Japan, well, my friend, you can do that with ExpressVPN. You can use the link down below in the description and get a discounted price along with three extra months for free. You can uh, get your money back if you don't like it, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't like it because we all need the privacy and in today's age especially. And you can also pay with Bitcoin, so that's a really cool feature as well. And let's get on with the video. So taking a look at the daily on Binance, we have a bit of a different structure here. So as you can see, um, we did have this purple resistance trend line at 42 and a half cents. And I thought that we might see a little bounce here from the yellow support trend line at 40 and a half cents all the way back to the purple and then come back down. But in fact, what we're doing is we're simply coming back down in a straight, uh, in, in a straight move to the downside and a straight, uh, you know, downtrend. A pretty strong downtrend uh, at that. And uh, I do think this uh, support trend line is something that we should be expecting to retest because we've broken above it here. As you can see, at the end of November, we broke above and now we're looking for that back test of support. Uh, so potentially you're going to be coming all the way back down here, looking for that bounce. And from there, you're going to have another move to the upside. That's something that could happen 
So be on the lookout for that. Obviously, this inverse head and shoulders played out perfectly with our technical targets being met. So hopefully you, you were able to trade that. Um, let's take a look at the MACD. We're printing a bearish cross, so our downtrend is con is being confirmed. The last time we had that was back in November, uh, November 8th, but that was really sudden because of the uh, Sam Bankman uh, douchebag freed uh, news that we got. Uh, by the way, hopefully, hopefully he's going to go to, the, to, to, to jail after what he's done. Uh, but uh, I was really surprised that he actually got arrested, uh, but that's besides the point. Uh... Also, we could take a look at the stochastic. So I would expect the stochastic to cool off and come back down into the oversold as well, just like we did here in November. And that would present us with a great buying opportunity. So keep an eye on the stochastic on the daily. As always, the settings for the stochastic um, is 2833. Um, and taking a look at the volume, the volume is declining. As you can see, we're getting a lot of selling pressure. And that's pretty obvious with the, all the FUD that's being thrown into the market. So these are good buying opportunities, in my opinion. But that's up for you to decide what to do with your money, obviously. So that's what I think on GLMR. If you, you know, zoom out and see what's going on. Let's go to the three-day chart and just zoom out and see how cheap the price is right now and how low we've come from this, uh, from this all-time high. And 98% pullback. So these are relatively good prices to be dollar cost averaging, even if we see like another 20% pullback with a blocks with a black swan event. I think uh, you, you better sit through that 20% pullback rather than not buy right now and watch us, you know, absolutely go into the bull market in the next year and a half. So I think just slowly dollar cost averaging is the smartest way. And obviously the stronger the dip, the more you buy, right? You don't want to be dollar cost averaging every day, even when the price is, is, is you know, is going up because I don't buy green candles. I only buy these big red candles and that's how you make money. So that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If I missed out anything important, let me know down below in the comment section. Feel free to check out my Patreon and feel free to follow me on Twitter. Goodbye and good night.